Dognose snakes are just an awesome snake. If you guys have never heard of these guys, they're honestly one of the best starter snakes to get because they only get like three plus feet or just about. That's a lot of hydrilla. So we're gonna start getting all this out without getting drowned by this lovely puppy. Let me, stop, give it to me. You're not helping. I thought we were a team. Male saltwater crocodiles always get bigger than females. Uh, but some ways of telling is to look inside the cloaca. Now what I've noticed is every time this crocodile's gone to the bathroom, uh, we haven't seen a willy. Beautiful, wonderful people. I was just hanging out with Leonardo DiCaprio, my albino hognose snake, just over here in the bushes. You know, this is the usual taking a walk with my dog, Barra, too. What is going on, Barra? You're a little wet. You're a little wet. You want to show everyone how well trained you are? You ready? Sit. Oh, yeah. How about high five? High five. Yes. Oh, my God. I am the ultimate trainer. Ooh. Barra, do a flip. Yes! All right, beautiful people, we're hanging out with my beautiful hognose snake. As you can see, Leonardo Caprio, he is getting huge. He is an albino, and he's a beautiful colubrid. Hognose snakes, they're a rear fang snake with a very, very mild venom. Only dangerous to you if you're allergic to any types of bee stings, any types of venoms. So if you end up getting chewed on by a snake like this, and you're allergic to venom, you'll go into anaphylaxis, which will make you swell up, and you can basically die in 15 minutes from suffocating. So you gotta be real careful and know what you're allergic to before getting into these interesting little pets, whether it's a, a tarantula, a rear fang hognose snake, or a, a bee collection. What if you want to collect bees? You should definitely know if you're allergic to bees before that. Anyways, hognose snakes are just an awesome snake. If you guys have ever heard of these guys, they're honestly one of the best starter snakes to get because they only get like three plus feet or just about. There's different types of hognose snakes, and this guy should be a western hognose snake. Usually when they're albino, they lose all that beautiful natural pigment, but naturally he'd be like a dark chocolate sack battling with a beige coloration and some white. These snakes are not just incredible because of their cute little raised up snoot, which is, oh my god, look how he wraps around my finger. Uh, used to raise up the dirt when they're digging, push that dirt aside when they're hunting. Yes, Bear, I'll play fetch with you really quick. Uh, go get it. You interrupted for that? Go get that stick. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, so they have that beautiful little snoot right there that's pushed up like a hog, hence the name hognose snake, and that helps them push through the dirt. Also, what's really interesting about this snake is they like to play dead. They're a bit of a, they're a bit of actors. They like to they play dead. If something tries to eat them, they'll flip onto their back, they'll open their mouth, and make their tongue go out to the side like they just died. And hopefully, like uh, the same move a possum moves, playing dead will make a predator leave you alone because they'll go, oh, something's wrong with that animal. It's, uh, it's got some disease, uh, gross, and then they walk away. Look at that, he's getting bigger, noticeably bigger because, I mean, look how chunky my friend Leonardo DiCaprio has got. I don't, I don't think he's gonna get a, a Reverend 2 role because he's a little too thick to be playing somebody surviving the wild. Look at that. Look at him, he's such a cutie. Now, since he is an albino, we don't want to sit out here in the sun for too long. He's he's like me. Ah! Needs to protect himself from the sunlight, those those rays. All right, guys, so today's gonna be a fun episode. We can't do much in the Serpentarium. We got people working there right now, building new things. Ooh, we got, the, we got it cooking. We're moving into the future, finally building out. We actually just got that new, ooh, did I just step in? Oh, spicy meatball. Anyways, beautiful people, let's, uh, I'm gonna go wash my foot, and we're actually gonna go check out the lake because there's a lot that needs to be done. We gotta do some maintenance in the lake. It's nice to have a big natural lake, but there are some things you have to maintain, like the hydrilla. So let's go take a swim, see how our beautiful catfish is doing, and afterwards, we're gonna fly Bagoy when it's not too hot. All right, beautiful people, it's hot as hell on this dock. Let's get ready to jump in the water. Do you want my sunglasses? Uh, so anyways, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess in here right now. It's not usually this dirty. Yeah, we've had some of the hydrilla growing, but all this random debris, all this random vegetation you see floating these bits, uh, we just had lawn service. We have it like every week or every other week, and all the trimmings went into the water. To help with that cleaning, oh, it's easier to get the flow going if the pipe isn't surrounded by hydrilla or overflow pipe. So what I'm gonna do right now is, whew, what I'm gonna do right now is going for a little dip. And uh, we're gonna start moving all the hydrilla. Luckily, that's the same spot where my big red tail catfish likes to hang out. So we can go check him out, see how he's doing. And Bear looks like she's already swimming around, so I guess I'll go join her. Mama Mia. Oh, hey puppy, throw 
made the GoPro, we got a whole bunch of fish hanging out right here. All right, let's avoid this. Go! That's a lot of hydrilla. So we're gonna start getting all this out without getting drowned by this lovely puppy. All right, so we're just gonna use the old, uh, the old uh, eagle technique. I'm gonna fly over all this very spiky hydrilla. Oh, wow. Well, this dog scratches my back. Oh boy. You're making this harder. Let me, stop. Give it to me. You're not helping. I thought we were a team. Stay over there. Ow! Ow, bad dog. You were just sitting on command. Ow! Ow! Son of a Oh, crocodiles are easier. Oh. It's easy. It's easy doing uh, running a wildlife park. I'm not drowning and stop biting me. How is this helping? How's biting helping me? Look at this little swamp baby right here. Little gift of little gift of God right there. All right, back to the eagle technique. Oh, okay. Oh crap. No. Oh. Oh, I need my insides. Get away. All right. Easy as picking cherries. I drill is a great natural filter, but when it starts molting like this and creating giant ugly mats throughout the lake, I don't like it, so it's time to clean up. I think what we should do while we're breaking all this apart, start to head over there, clear up the overflow pathway, so at least the surface of the water, it all cycles out and gets clean again. Let's do this. All right, guys, I'm gonna walk the way of the water, and she's gonna walk the way of the land, and this is a, this is a water bear, so it can walk wherever it likes. The big red tail catfish loves to hang out right over in this corner by the pipe. So let's see. This is that stagnant water on the top. The surface needs to get cleared out. So the way we do that is we clear the path of the flow of the water to the pipe. Make it much easier. There are giant paku in here. I haven't seen them. This is usually where they like to hang out, but also that giant catfish. Come on, buddy. All right, I believe the catfish should be, oh, he's right there. Look at that beautiful red tail catfish. Look how beautiful this catfish is. Let's see if we can get, check out this catfish. It's getting real kicked up because of bear. But that's okay, look at this. Monster red tail catfish. Oh, look at that. Oh. Gone into the deep. Did you see that? That was a beast. Look at this, American alligator. Four, whoa, whoa, whoa. 40 teeth on the bottom, 40 teeth on the top. 80 reasons not to mess with them. I'm gonna do a quick release. It's just as dangerous as capturing the alligator. One, two. Oh, oh no! Oh! Ah. Usually the gator doesn't retaliate. No! Oh, but today's the day! Look, she's helping me. She's helping me break apart the hydrilla. I trained her to do this. This is just fun. Living the best life here at Chandler's Wild World. Featuring the Serpentarium. Featuring Chandler's Wildlife YouTube. Featuring Chandler's Extra Wildlife YouTube. Featuring Chandler's Wild Talks. Featuring Chandler's new macaroni dish. Chan Get all this nasty garbage, as they'd say in France. Oh, little spider. Come on. Just trying to make my pond look beautiful, you know. I was showing Brian Barcheck around, and I was ashamed of myself. Because this place is a mess. It's time to tidy up. Make sure this is, this is ready for the next big YouTuber to come by or just anyone in general. It's nice having a natural pond. It's just a little bit of maintenance, but much better than dealing with a big tank, filters, and all that extra drama. Let's go on in. That's how bears fight. Take note. You want to be a bear. Ow! Bear attack! Everything I planned for is coming into fruition. Look, the flow is going, the dog is attacking me, but the flow is going, and it's getting nice and cleaned up now, so I just need to make sure I survive this water bear attack. You look at you, silly dog. There's the red tail, look, look, look. See him, he's just cruising over there. That is just too cool, he's such a beast. He's gotta be like three foot. All right, so I'm gonna let this clear up. It's just gonna start floating into that pipe. A nice clean surface. Hopefully this breaks apart over here in this corner. But if not, I guess I'll have to go into that end too. This is too cool. Swimming in my own big wreck pond full of giant Amazon fish. Straight from the Amazon to my front yard, yes. Keep 
from fogging. Very good, very good. Godspeed, let's prosper. Here he is, here he is. He's a beauty! I give him a big smooch, and he loved it. Listen, let's call truths. All right, my beautiful. Enjoy swimming. Guys, let's go feed Bagoy, have him fly across the porch. And you know what? Let's go check out Anakin, the saltwater crocodile. I have some news about him that I want to tell you. All right, so what I wanted to show you is that Anakin, the saltwater crocodile that we got when I first moved to Chandler's Wild World, this big, beautiful 11 acre facility, uh, we we're kind of, we're, we're on the fence. We weren't really sure if we really had a male here. And it's kind of hard for the people who uh, release these animals to other facilities for them to gauge whether uh, it's a male or female. Because when they're this size, it's really hard to check inside the cloaca. Because the only way to check is by looking inside the cloaca. Because they're not going to be sexually dimorphic, meaning you can tell what sex by looking at them. They're not going to be sexually dimorphic until they're like 10 plus years old, you know? Uh, male saltwater crocodiles always get bigger than females. Uh, but some ways of telling is to look inside the cloaca. Some people are able to use tools to expose uh, the little the little willy to let you know it's a male And if there's nothing in there, it's a female now What I've noticed is every time this crocodile has gone to the bathroom uh, We haven't seen a willy and what I have noticed is that females tend to have these two little glands that pop out the sides uh, When they go to the bathroom males don't I believe this is a female hence which is why we have to rename Anakin to Padme Padme the saltwater crocodile It's not a big deal that that little Anakin turned out to be a female, it's not a problem at all because I still love saltwater crocodiles. Saltwater crocodiles are literally my favorite animal on our planet. The tattoo I've got on my skin is reference to a saltwater crocodile. I'm obsessed with crocs. I grew up watching Steve Irwin. I grew up watching all these documentaries on them, reading books about them. They're just fascinating animals. They're the biggest reptile on the planet. They get over 20 feet long. They weigh over a ton sometimes and they can literally take on anything, whether it's something to eat or maybe take on a wound. A crocodile can literally get its arm ripped off and stop the blood flow to its wound, preventing it from bleeding out. They can even slow their heart rate down to four beats in an hour so they can hold their breath as long as possible. It's insane that these guys have so much control over their own body. They are the true Jedis of the wildlife world. So we're gonna rename Anakin to Padme, the saltwater crocodile. A little bit of an update, thought I should tell you guys because I wasn't noticing any uh, any push pops in there, if you know what I mean. But anyways, let's go put a Anakin. <clears throat> let's go put Padme, our sweet little angel, back, and let's go feed Bagoy, the Eurasian eagle owl, who's definitely a male because he's he's a troublesome bird. Ah! All right, beautiful people, are you ready to see the second largest owl on the planet soar across a giant Olympic-sized swimming pool? Are you ready? Let me hear you. Yes, yes, are you? Yes, everyone. Yes, let's do this. Bagoy! Up, up! Fly to me, my boy! Sword! No, don't get distracted, it's a lizard! What about a short jump? Up, up! You were just being lazy. He was just being lazy. I did give him a nice medium-sized rat a day ago, so he's probably still a, a little bit chunky, not, not a good weight for flight. But Bagoy, <laughs> he's the, still the cutest bird on the planet, right? You see that? See his little tongue sticking out? When he gets a little bit of uh, rat guts and juice in his beak, he goes, Mmm, tasty, right? Oh, what's that? Ooh, a cattle egret. He, any bird out here, any lizard, anything, he locks onto. Just don't forget, this is a top predator bird. Being the second largest owl on the planet makes him a predator to anything he can grab in his talons. So, weasels, foxes, small dogs, feral cats, other owls, hawks, and even little children, little tr children who leave trash on the beach, they will come after and they will eat. Right, Bagoy? Right? Don't, don't litter, because he gives a hoot. Oh, and speaking of hooing, this owl species does hoot, but he's too immature right now. He's still very young. Later on, he's going to have a beautiful hoo hoo hoo. And it's going to be amazing to hear him, because he's going to be on my glove. Instead of chirping and clacking like a little baby, he'll go hoo hoo hoo. 
because don't forget he's still a young young bird he's only a couple months old and he's still got a bit of growing to do he was just so crazy you are so beautiful you know that yes you know that you know that here let's fix your feet come on fix your feet and eat some more food eat some more rat guts tasty tasty rat guts all right my beautiful wonderful whoop, little horse sounds all right my beautiful wonderful people i will see you on the next one stay beautiful stay safe don't forget to check us out on chandlerswildlife.com. You can get your own t-shirts, stickers, whatever you want. Also, Patreon for exclusive content. If you support us by buying shirts or getting on Patreon, you're helping support the big goal of building out this facility. Today, we had all the carpenters over. We got all the drywall up on our garage wall. It's looking good. It's looking beautiful. We're moving on to the future, and it's a bright, beautiful future. I'll see you on the next one. Stay beautiful, stay safe, and most of all, Follow your dreams, stay passionate, and do what you want in life, because that's all that matters. Not money, experience, and good times. And tasty meals! Ooh! Off with the head! Off with the head! Oh, 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 oh! Delicious. Stop! Give it to me! You're not helping! I thought we were a team!